RBS Business Research Academy welcomes to you in the lecture number 14. Dear friends, in this lecture, I'm going to discuss. Dear friends, in this lecture, I'm going to discuss how to uh, validate the results of the formative measurement model. And dear friends, as you know that the, there are the two parts of the uh, any model. One is called as a measurement model, and is called as a structural model. In the measurement model, there are two parts. One is a formative measurement model, and another is a a uh, reflective measurement model. My two videos are already available and the links I have left uh, below this video. Uh, if you find time and if you feel suitable, you can please watch and then come back here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to check out the how to establish the converged validity and the ABE as well as how to know about the uh, outer weights of, the, of this model. Uh, I have divided this video into two parts. In the first part, I will discuss about the how to assess the converged validity of the formative measurement model and another how to assess the collinearity of the measurement model. In the uh, video number 14, uh, part two, I have discussed about the how to get the weights because weights, if you want to know, then you are required to use the bootstrapping technique and through that one, you can do this one. Dear friends, let's start our discussion. Uh, before, but before this one, my name is Dr. Raymond Sumro and I'm from Shavati University, Pakistan. Dear friends, I have also earned this certificate from the Smart Peelist Academy where I can be the nine modules on the Smart Peelist. Okay, now I'm going to start uh, uh, my discussion, but before this one, before doing some practical, I want to share some theoretical uh, information for it because that's very important to understand the rest of the things uh, which you will see uh, in this video. First of all, on the page, uh, on the very famous book on the premier on the partial least square, the structural equation modeling, uh, period same, the its image you are looking uh, on, it's the page number 118. It is written that the internal consistency perspective that includes the reflective measurement model evolution cannot be applied for the to the formative measurement model since the formative measurement do not necessarily co-vary. The problem with that is the uh, reflective they uh, there is an internal consistency. There is some of the uh, relation is there or correlation is there among the all the indicators. So what are the tools which you are applying to assess? The results of the form uh, reflective model, the same tool we cannot apply it in case of the formative because they not necessarily they co vary with each other. And uh, in the uh, on the page number 119, it is also written that the many such as in uh, incorrectly use reflective measurement model evolution criteria to assess the quality of formative measures in the smart PLS. So that is, uh, I think, incorrect to use the some of the tools which are for the reflective and which you are using on the form, uh, formative okay is rebuilt by the review of the previous same studies in the strategy management and the marketing discipline by the hair at all okay and another uh let me say theoretical uh let me say point of view i want to share on the same page number 119 that the assessing convergent and discriminability using the criteria similar to those associated with the reflective measurement model is not meaningful when formative indicators and their weights are involved. So the same thing is there. So if even you are doing that, the result will be useless. Last but not the least, there's about the formative indicators are assumed to be error-free, which means that the internal consistent reliability concept is inappropriate. So this is the, some of the critical information which I wanted to share with you. That's very important. Now I'm coming on the uh, how to assess the convergent validity. But before this one, I sh we should understand what is convergent validity. From the same book, I have taken out this uh, paragraph 121, page number. Uh, convergent validity is the extent to which a Meyer correlates positively with the other Meyer indicators of the same constant. So that is the definition of the uh, convergent validity, which we, we should know. Okay, and from the page number 2121, when evaluating formatively measurement model, we have to test whether the formatively Meyer constant is highly polluted with the reflective Meyer of the same constant. That means that we have to create the check the correlation, the level of the correlation between the formative and the reflective measurement model. Okay, and a, 
If there is a high pollution, then it creates a redundancy. And so now, what is redundancy? Now it means that the, it stems from the information in the model being redundant in the sense that it is included in the formative construct and again in the retractive mass. So now the one construct, one indicator, which is in the format as well as in the retractive, that means that the same indicator has become redundant, useless for So that the better thing is to, uh, to delete it. So now practically I'm going to do how to check the conversion validity. It's very simple. Now here is a smart PDS interface is available before you. So here a wonderful uh, already example is there about the carpool reputation model. So here, for example, we are going to choose this one, attraction. Now in the attraction, uh, here the one is a formative indicator and here there is only one indicator. Now this is called, uh, this we call as a single uh, global item, single global indicator. So here we are going to compare the formative with the single one, okay. And the tool uh, to measure the convertibility is there where you are going to check out the, the relationship between the formative and the reflective. So now in the reflective, there are the multiple indicators are there. See here, there's only single indicators there. So the both I will do right now. Okay, this is already done, but I'm for the practice purpose, I'm not following this one, but I'm doing some practical work. How to do this one? That's very easy. Just did it. Okay, uh, new project. So now here, convertibility number one. Okay, we are creating a new project. Now, new project has been created. Okay, so now we are we are required to import the data. So data is already available, carpet reproduction model. So now the same data I have keep. Uh, on my uh, the link I have left is below this uh, uh, vid uh, video from where you can download this uh, data for your practical purpose. Open it, okay, then again, okay. Now the cal initial calculations are being done, okay. And uh, now I'm going on my canvas. Now pretty clean canvas is there. So now for example, I want to check the Permissibility of this construct. Bring it here. Oh, okay. But from here, find out these are the indicators. Uh, for example, if I want to work on the performance, now performance, select all these one and bring it here in the. Okay. And uh, then uh, we have to uh, find out the uh, global indicator, single item. So this is the global single item given here. The same indicator which you uh, Misa, saw in the before, a few minutes before this one. Change it and keep it in uh, straight uh, before this one. Okay. And then see uh, some others. Uh, this attraction, the global item is already given here. Okay. CSOR, global item is again there. So now, this is the refractive construct. We have to convert into the formative. That's very easy. Right click your mouse key and then uh, find out this one switch between the formative and respective or alternative you can use the alt plus q button from your keyboard click it now now this constraint has been converted from the respective to formative and then provide a one connection between these two ones so you have provided connection and then the color of these two latin variable has been changed okay now we are going to calculate its pills algorithm and this time, factor, start calculations is very quick in calculating. Now, this has calculated for us. Come on. Then, now, here. Here you're looking, this is our results. And now, this result is there. It is uh, far beyond the point 0.8. So, here, there's a one guideline that uh, on the page number 121 that the highly magnitude of 0.9 or 80 is 0.8 and above desired is desired by the chin 1998 for the path between the y formative and the y reflective so now this is the path so the value should be higher than 80.8 now this is the higher than 0.8 okay and in the tool here that's about the 
R squared. If the value of the R squared is above 0.64, it means the convergent validity has been established, has been validated, that the this one is different from the uh, this indicator uh, from the uh, this indicator or from this uh, uh, like the construct. So now it will, through these four tools, this went done. Okay. Now, alternatively, we are going to choose, uh, uh, try another method, and uh, that's very uh, also very easy. What to do? That uh, we are creating another project for this purpose. Okay. Uh, convertibility came two. Okay. Okay. And then provide the data to us. Okay, sorry, this provide data. Data now. By the way, it's link. I have also left at the uh, below this video. Okay, and then okay. Again, okay. The data has been imported for this model, and then we are opening the canvas model. So now a canvas is available here. Okay. So now, uh, from these are the indicators are there. So, for example, we want to check the convergence of the formative with regard to the reflective multiple indicators. Earlier, there was only single indicator, like in the CV convergence attempt one, the single uh, indicator, and but here there are the multiple indicators. How to do this one? That's again very simple. GPP one to GPP two. We are bringing here, okay, and then we are bringing another one for the boot. TGP to five. Now we are here. okay. Uh, make some adjustment. Okay, uh, shift this one on this side. Okay. Now uh, see this is both are our reflective. Now we have to convert this one into the formative. That's very easy. Convert into the formative. Now we're going to check the relationship between the formative and the reflective. Now again uh, connect with this two one. The color didn't change. Okay, can calculate and a fields algorithm and then factor and start calculations. Calculations has been started now. The same value is available. So this time we have also. So this time our value is 5.29. It is far below than our required. At least it should be the 0.8. So it is far below than that one. Okay, and a then if you look at the R square, R square has also some, some same issue. The minimum value of R square should be 0.64. And this one is a well below the end of 0.64. Uh, so now that means the convergence validity has not been established, has not been made yet. Now, what to do, how to solve this problem? Uh, in this one, on the page number 121, uh, it is recommended that the formative constraint need to be theoretically uh, are conceptually refined by extending our adding indicator. So now, if you want to move, uh, refine it, if you want to increase uh, this value and this value, then you are quite what to add more uh, indicators in this one, or reduce some of the indicators, or make some adjustments theoretically or conceptually in this one. Probably, for example, uh, it's uh, let me say this uh, value is very uh, low. At least this value should be higher than 0.5. So if you delete this one, probably let me say this value may be increased. So now in your free time, you can do this one because of time, limited time, I can't do this one. So now it, I'm leaving this thing on you. One more important thing which I um, I want to share that now here, here we're looking at the uh, another image and uh, this image is, you're looking here another image that is exhibit 5.2 from the Page number one, two, two. So now, according to this one, that uh, if this one, uh, the independent variable must be your formative, and while the dependent uh, variable should be reflective. That's very important. Okay. So you must consider this one in your mind. Okay. Now we are going to start working uh, on the AVE. How to check the AVE of this one? That's also quite easy. To check the AVE, that's very easy. So for this purpose, uh, the carpal depression model is available. Just bring here, extend it model. Now the model has been opened. Okay. So I think uh, let's uh, zoom it out is 
we can look at within the one window. Now all the indicators are within the window. Now it's very easy to check out this uh, ABE. Just go into calculate fields algorithm and uh, then uh, factor. Okay, and calculate start calculations, and then it will provide you the values of the average variance extracted. It means that in the older versions, probably in the uh, let me say, version number one or two at that time, that means that uh, smart meters did not have any upper uh, uh, like the, the uh, strength to calculate the AVE and the value of the tolerance. So that's why the people were uh, used to refer to the species from there. They will calculate all these ones and then. But in the latest, uh, the, in this version, so now this facility is already available there. So that's why the values of AVE are available. How to go? Go on the report and then. So this is available from here. Quality diagnostic VIF are available here. Okay, so now uh, in this one, uh, now I'm telling you the minimum value. So if you are so strict, that means if the then if the value of the VI is less than three, that's okay. If the value of more than three, then the problem is there. But if you want to become so somewhat liberal, then the if the VI value is less than five, that's okay. If the higher than five, then there's a problem. So here, smart bill is follows a five percent, okay, or five number. Uh, not percent, but five number. So if the value of any uh, indicator is more than the equal to five or more than the five, the this software will uh, change its color. Its color will be red. Now looking here, you look image here, some of the indicators, their values, VI values are higher than five. So now these have been shown with the, uh, in the red color. So now we have no any violation in this regard. So that's why there's no any problem. But if you want to become even more liberal, then the, if the value of that VI value is more equal to 10 or more than 10, the problem is there. Okay, so these are the three benchmarks are there, but normally I follow five numbers and this look good. At least you are in the middle one. And the, the same with the smart PLS also follow the five. Okay, so now, as there is no violation, if there is any violation, the what you should what you should do if there is any violation, if there is any uh, value indicator, we have uh, value of any indicator is a red color. What to do now? Here yeah. uh, we have to refer page number one twenty six where the expert five point four, which you are looking right now. Some of the guidelines are here. There now first one is assess the level of polarity in the formative measurement model. First one. No quality level of the uh, no critical levels of the quality. Uh, if the VI is less than five, in this regard, what you should do and like the significance of the outer waves and interface. Okay, so now there is no only violation directly. We have to analyze the uh, outer waves. So we have to uh, like the interpret the formative indicators and in absolute and as well as in the relative uh, terms. Okay. Now, alternatively, critical values, if they are equal to five or higher than five, treat the quality issue. It means the quality is there. So now you have to treat this issue. How to treat? Again, two tools are there. Uh, no quality level of the, uh, no critical level of the quality, less than five, analyze the significance, outer weights, and interpret. Do the same thing which you, which you are doing in the first one. Okay. Now, if the values are equal to five or higher, then what delete or dismiss this one? There is no only a benefit of just keeping the setup of the model uh, in your analysis. So, dear friends, this is all about the conversion validity and the coordinate with the help of the AVE. Now, here the part one we are going to end at the part one, and uh, also I will uh, we will meet again in the part two. So till that time, I request you please take care of yourself and take care of this channel by watching the videos, by, by liking the videos, by sharing these videos, as the mix, this message can reach to the maximum of the researchers across the world. Thank you very much for your time and for your consideration.